unleash the true potential of your Ryzen 7000 series chip. Out of the box, these beasts deliver impressive performance, but it is far from optimized for efficiency. That's why I'm gonna show you a few simple changes you can make in your BIOS that even a technophobe can follow. No technical jargon, no complicated reboots, just easy, simple steps. And hey, if you do need help, just drop a comment and we'll gladly walk you through it. First, a quick check-in with our subscribers. In the coming days, we'll be changing our channel logo to one of the two options you see here. So when you see a new picture pop up in your subscriptions, don't worry, it's still us. And hey, if you're not subscribed and you find our content helpful, now would be the perfect time to hit that button and let us know down in the comments, what do you think of the new logos? Today, we're gonna to be comparing the performance of the 7950X with PBO enabled, 105 watt eco mode, our own custom tuning against the stock 170 watt TDP. By the way, that's the last time you're gonna hear us mention TDP. Don't fall for that. It doesn't mean anything has nothing to do with the actual power consumption of your chip. It's just a marketing term that AMD came up with, made their own formula to back into a number that they decided on long before. Our benchmarks are gonna be based on Cinebench R23 multi-core for a quick snapshot of power consumption, overall performance, and temperatures. If you'd like to see more benchmarks, please just drop a comment. We ran each test on a fresh reboot with Expo enabled at 6,000 megahertz. So our baselines for stock gave us a score of 37,279. Like I said, the 7950X out of the box is no slouch. This thing absolutely rips. But along with that score, you'll see a max temp of 95C. That's high, but it is exactly how AMD designed this chip. Power peaked at 235 watts, again, illustrating that AMD's TDP number is a joke. We saw a max boost of 5.8 gigahertz and average clocks of 5146. All in all, these are really solid numbers. Turning on performance boost in the BIOS gave us a jump up to 37,704. Again at 95C, but with max power jumping to 243 watts. Our average clocks bumped up to 5215, still with a 5.8 gigahertz max boost. That's definitely an improvement, but would barely be noticeable in day-to-day -day performance at all. Flipping over to the 105 watt eco mode has us moving in the other direction. We see our score drop to 33721, but we also drop temps to 67C and max power all the way down to 142 watts. For most people, this is probably all you need. You aren't going to notice that drop in performance, but you will absolutely notice the drop in temps and power consumption. So this is where things get really interesting, guys. When I see stock power at 230 watts and eco all the way down at 142, my first thought is there has to be something in between that can give us a better power to performance ratio. That's where our custom tuning comes in. So we went into the BIOS, made a few tweaks, flipped PB over to manual, tweaked our PPT to 169, our TDC to 125 and EDC to 187. We also moved our curve optimizer to negative 12 and something interesting happened. We actually saw a gain, albeit tiny, in performance over stop, coming in at 37,479. Again, essentially a wash, but technically still a gain. However, our temps stayed at 69C with max power coming in at 169 watts. That's a 40% drop in power, a 37% drop in temps, all while improving on the stock performance. 
So what does this all mean for you? Don't settle for less. With just a couple simple tweaks in your BIOS, you can run cooler, quieter, and save on power costs. Don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your gaming and your work experience. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content, and as always, thanks for watching.